Hello, and welcome to Film Slam's Dreams post film conversation for Day X. My name is Eric Seiler, and I'm a professor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by a host of people from the film Day X. First, we have Katharina Revillis. She's the director for Day X. Hello, Katharina, and welcome. Hello, thank you for having us. Next, we have the writer for Day X, Samuel Chalela. Hello, Samuel, and welcome. Hello, thank you very much for the invitation. Next, we have Julia Shellhas. She was the cinematographer for Day X. Hello, Julia, and welcome. Hello, thank you for having us here. And last but not least, you might recognize her from the film as Frida. We have uh, Ninel Shipkatz. I believe I said that correctly. Hello, Ninel, and welcome. Hi. Okay, it's so good to have all of you here for this brilliant um, film. So let me start with the direct out. Just, just go around and ask each of your question, uh, Katharina. Um, so as a director for this film, did you work with Samuel? Did Samuel come to you with the idea or did you go to Samuel with the idea to get this um, film uh, um, done? So we started this project in film school and there was a seminar where there was a speed dating with authors and directors. And we just had a five minute conversation. And after that, I had to take a flight to Cuba. <laughs> and, but it was really nice. And we immediately got along really well. And I had this idea of a film that I pitched him really quickly and we decided to work together. That was it. Oh, good, good. So, Samuel, when, she, when um, Katharina pitched the idea to you, uh, did you know much about um, that um, day um, back in the 1950s, or did you have to research it to write it? Um, not really. We, we did our research. Um, the um, film is based slightly on, a, on an experience that actually um, Katharina had. Maybe she can later um, explain a bit more about that. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, more or less uh, this this character, this this kid, um, watching stuff happening outside her window, um, and feeling that anguish and that fear and not knowing uh, what it was uh, that she was afraid of, in a sense. And I did uh, back in Colombia, where I come from, uh, have something similar. Um, so we clicked actually immediately, and then we kind of placed the story back to Germany um, and we did our research and we found like this period of time that we found both quite interesting um, and in which such a story could could develop. So that was more like the, the process of finding, um, yeah, the okay. period of time. Good, good, a great collaborative effort there. Now, um, Julia, you got pulled into this project. How did you get um, connected with this project? Did you know um, Katharina and Samuel ahead of time? Uh, yes, I knew Katerina. Uh, we um, already did a project together and uh, we know each other a long time now. <laughs> and, uh, and yes, and uh, she showed me the script and uh, it was beautiful and we did it. <laughs> you did, you did a really beautiful job capturing the images and make, making us feel like we were experiencing that day. Now, um, Niall, as an actress, um, did you, how did you get cast in this? Were you um, part of a casting call? Tell us a little bit about that process. Um, Katerina and my parents have friends uh, that lives um, in the house where Katerina lives in. So they're, I think, um, my friend, my parents told her something about me, and, and then I was invited to casting. Yeah. Now, now, have you done any acting before this, or was this your first acting role? Um, not films, but like um, some. How do you call it? Spots. Commercials, image films. Yeah. Oh, great. And um, finally, you were you were supposed to play an eight-year-old girl in a um, film. Um, how, how old are you now? Are you 
you look a little older than eight. Yes. Um, uh, uh, I know a woman doesn't want to tell her age. <laughs> we'll uh, I'll move on from that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Katharina, um, so directing um, this film, tell, tell us a little bit more about it. How long did it take to um, uh, do the film from start to finish, from the writing to the actual shooting to the editing? So um, it went all pretty quick, actually. I think we just wrote two months, maybe. And then the longest time it took to actually um, produce it, um, because we got funding from a governmental broadcasting station that went quick, but then finding the place and the actress, the main actress was quite a difficult task, but all in all, I think it was just like one year um, writing, shooting and editing, or maybe one and a half, a little bit more. Yeah, and how many days of um, shooting did you do? I think like nine or 10. Nine or 10, okay. Yeah. Right, great. Right. And um, Samuel, as the writer, I know you, you go through, as a writer, you go through lots of different um, drafts of the um, film. Um, how did the film change from when you first wrote it to the actual final cut? <laughs> I know there's um, some changes. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Maybe it's an interesting question. I, um, it's it's, it's uh, some time ago now, um, but I, uh, I would, say that the core of the story did uh, survive <laughs> from the beginning till the end. Um, and I think that's the most important thing. I mean, you go um, into writing with a motivation, with an idea, with, with some characters, and I think we preserved them. Um, some things changed along the way, of course, um, due to, uh, I don't know, different locations, uh, the period in time, um, you start to think about the characters in, a, in another way when you already wrote two drafts of the story. So. Um, a lot of things change, change, but this was definitely not the kind of uh, project in which uh, you wrote a lot and changed uh, a lot from the original idea. All right, good. I just want to let everyone know we're talking to um, cast and crew from Day X. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A portal and we'll get to them as time allows. Now, Julia, as a cinematographer, which um, scene did you enjoy filming the most? There were some brilliant scenes. I really enjoyed this scene when um, Frida's walking and ice is cracking and also the um, end at the, with the soldier. Um, uh, just as so many in the house, you know, with the birthday uh, coming up. Is there a particular scene you enjoyed the most? It's very difficult to say. Um, there are plenty moments uh, that I enjoyed. Like I can, like I cannot think at a moment that I not enjoyed shooting somehow. So it's uh, very difficult for me to put, like, to pick up um, uh, a specific one. I think uh, for, for sure the one in the forest was the most spectacular thing we did uh, during the movies because all the, the fog you see, it's fog we created you now with machines and, uh, and it was freezing cold and uh, it was um, just an amazing epic moment also in the, uh, like, uh, um, as, a, as, a, as a filmmaker. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, really I cannot uh, say uh, there is this one thing that I really, Lost because I through all the process I I lost it and I lost all the scene with it. Yeah. Right, and as a cinematographer, um, Katharina gave you a lot of um, uh, uh, liberty to film in a certain way. Since she was in the film herself, she had to trust you to get the images that you know she wanted. Yes, for sure. But I have to say, we did a lot of work before. So it's not that we decided on the moment what to shoot, but we talked for weeks and weeks about uh, how everything had to be done. So basically when we were in the process of the real shooting, um, uh, we already knew uh, what we were doing and this also, of course, helps uh, in the process that the director is also one of the main actor because, you no, know, yeah. And also, yeah, we were very lucky that uh, we could be on the set of this flat a few weeks earlier, which is very unusual. 
uh, for a process and we rehearsed every scene and we shot every scene before the shooting and I edited a lot of it previously before we actually did the actual shooting. So everything was basically thought, rethought and then thought again. And so we already had like in a miniature way, the film in a storyboard, but also like the shots with stands in stand ins. Also, we pre uh, rehearsed with Minelle and uh, myself as the mother character, and we already basically did um, how we were going to plan the angles with the camera, the shots, and everything. That, that's really good that you had the time to do that. Uh, it really shows that um, pre production that you've done, the pre shoot and the um, pre-edit to really, you know, make corrections. A lot of times filmmakers don't have that opportunity. So it's, it shows with that. Um, Niall, um, after you saw the film, what was your reaction? Is there any, anything you thought you could have done better that you liked, disliked? Tell us about your reaction to the film. Um, so I, I, like, I like the film. Um, I, I couldn't see the um, scenes um, after, like, we filmed them. Katerina <laughs> told me that I <laughs> don't. Um, ich durfte die Szenen vorher nicht sehen. Yeah, so she says she was not supposed to see the scenes. Uh, during the shoot. Und um, ja, also ich war nicht überrascht, aber ich war, also es hat mir sehr gut gefallen. So es war she, nur nicht ganz das, was ich erwartet habe. So she was not surprised, but she really liked it. But it was not quite as she thought it would be, but she really liked it. Yeah. Oh, good. I, I'm, I'm glad you, you liked it. Um, Niall, do you? want to continue acting? Do you want to do more roles? Yes, definitely. Okay. Would you like to do more films, more commercials or theater? What do you like? Um, I think films are my favorite thing to do. Okay. Well, great, great. Okay. Now, um, um, Katharina, um, they, with the with this with the release of this film, um, give me your impressions, your the reaction, the response that people have had. I don't know if you you know had a chance to show it in different countries around the world or not, but just give us some general reaction. Well, unfortunately, during the pandemic, the film started just very shortly before the pandemic started, so I was just at two festivals present and um, the reactions were really overwhelming. Um, we showed it in France and uh, it was a lot of also very young people watching it and they responded very strongly but also in the summer we showed it in the festival in Bavaria and it was mainly people 50, 60 and up and they were very surprised that this film also had a run on children and youth festivals that they didn't understand because for them, this was a political film and it had this complex historical uh, setup, how this could also be perceived by a young audience because for them it was very complex, but I think this is um, what really made me happy because it speaks on the personal level of the tragedy of the person, of the character of Frida, uh, with, to the relationship and her mother, what's happening within the family, it's very, um, you know, it, it, can, it speaks to different kind of generations and also it has this political uh, you know event which maybe is more complex to understand and this also speaks to elder um, people so i thought it was really interesting that it worked out and i was very happy about that but so far for us it would be very interesting to hear from the audience now because we were basically all almost all digitally this year or last year and we would be very happy if there's any questions, because for us, it's the first time a Q&A like this is online. And we'd be very happy to hear something. You're right, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, yeah, so please put your questions in the Q&A portal and we'll get to them. Um, Samuel, um, the ending of the film, uh, 
I have to admit, I was I was not sure what was going to happen between the soldier and Frida. Why did you choose that ending? You could have, you know, chose a number of different endings. What was the whole point of, you know, wrapping up the story? Mm, interesting. <laughs> um, what was the whole point? Um, well, I guess more than more than a point or a um, or or an, uh, how do you say that? Uh, more than more than a goal. I think we stayed true to the character, and um, that is uh, one major uh, challenge, I think, when you're writing. Because, as you said, um, you have like this, like this, this confrontation, well, kind of confrontation at the end, and the the threat is there, and the fear is there, and you can you can sense it. And then we could we could have gone in a number of ways, but I think um, giving Frida this kind of um, 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 rebel attitude in a way in this um, smart ass kind of thing <laughs> um, that that works uh, a lot for the character because um, you know you you understand the character and the fear and the anguish and everything but we didn't we didn't push it like in a in a plot kind of way we didn't want to um, you know make it more than than, than it was so to speak so um, I think the, the the major challenge and and what we focused on was staying true to the character and, and try really to think what would this character do in that moment. Um, it also, at the end, it, it, it really brings kind of a glimpse of hope in this tragic or dramatic um, context. Um, and, this is, and, and this is uh, more the response of the, of the soldier uh, that is able to see that he's like in front of a child and not in front of a, uh, I don't know, an enemy in that sense. So that's like the glimpse of humanity that, that we, want to, we wanted to, um, you know, uh, portray um, regardless of the context. Okay. Yeah, well, um, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. But we do have one question that's come and someone wants to know, anyone can answer this. What was the point of the um, slide um, projected that Frida received as a birthday gift? So I guess they want to know what was the point of that? I don't know. Samuel or Katharina. The point of what again? I didn't. I didn't. Um, I that right. the, the the gift that um, Frida received for her birthday. What was oh. the point of the gift? Um, Katharina. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's called a stereoscope. Okay. Um, it's a thing that people used to look at images, and it was very rare in the GDR at this time. I mean, people did not have a television um, and looking at images, I mean, it's like looking at books with images and it's also 3D, this kind of thing. I actually still have it, <laughs> it's right there. Um, it's, yeah, it's very fascinating because you have this light and you can just like really fall into this image. If you like come closer, you basically see a three dimensional, it's like, imagining a movie if you like slide through different images through it so it's it's like pre-form of watching a film but with yeah. your imagination so I thought it was nice uh something nice to have for a child yeah oh good good and another question is it's a I guess it's a follow-up to this is um how did you um get all of the props and the locations um and how, how did you get all the props and the locations to make this film? So I guess they're wondering, how did you make it look like it was, you know, back in the 1950s? Yeah, so we had this uh, really amazing set designer, Tatiana Bastos, and she went hunting on things. We have this platform online where you can um, trade or buy. Or we did not have much money, obviously, as uh, students. Um, so we basically looked on the platform who goes away old stuff for free and like the big furniture, um, a lot of it we got for free from this platform. We wrote them. We really love this radio, for instance, we get, got it as a gift or the couch we have. But then a lot of stuff also came from a fundus, is that the right word? Fundus, like a place where you borrow stuff for film uh, props. So the smaller props that had to be authentic also for that time that are very specific, like just even the matches, some things you just borrow because like you can't find it. But we went a lot of on a lot of flea markets and every one of us was hunting like uh, for the right stuff because everything, like every light switch was exchanged. 
to be authentic. So yeah, it was a lot of every team member had to help out. <laughs> we borrowed a lot of stuff, of course. Right, that worked out really well, especially with the editing, your um, colorist and so forth, just to give it an authentic look. So um, uh, uh, lots of um, congrats to your editor as well too. Okay, those are some good questions. Before I um, we wrap up here, I just want to go around and figure out what's going on next for everyone. Um, let me start with you, um, Niall. Are you working on a film now? Are you doing anything now that we can see soon in the future? I'm not okay. sure. Niall, oh, can you hear me? Sure. Um, right now, it's just a bit difficult because um, I I have all the time like e castings because of Corona. Yeah, but I don't film right now, and I don't think like that soon something will come. Okay. Well, hopefully <laughs> something. Hopefully something soon will come. Katharina might have some ideas for you. I'm trying to <laughs> help you out there. <laughs> All right, and what about you, Julia? Are you um, planning on working on any more projects soon? Sorry, because I uh, like uh, in the same room, there is another person speaking on Zoom. <laughs> so it's a bit complicated, but uh, yes, uh, I'm planning actually to do a film with Katerina. So maybe Katerina can say more about that. <laughs> okay, great, great. Uh, let me, uh, I'll get to you last, Katerina. And why, I'm gonna talk to Samuel. While I'm doing that, can you get the um, stereoscope? Because I wanna see that too while I, I talk to Samuel. So Samuel, what about you? Are you gonna, what are you writing next or doing next that we can see soon? Um, I finished writing last year a short film in a feature film and I'm uh, kind of leaning towards direction. So right now I'm, um, you know, starting to look around for funding and so on. Potential um, partners in crime and so on. Those are uh, stories in Colombia. So I'm living in Germany. So it's kind of a, a weird uh, way to work, but let's see, let's see how it goes. Oh, great. Well, good luck with that. Good luck. <laughs> and Katharina, uh, before we hear what you're doing next, um, you have one of the props from the film. So how did, where did you find that? On the internet, where you find all these weird things. <laughs> so somebody sent it for me from another town, but they actually forgot to send the electricity plug. And so I had to find it because it's a very old one that doesn't exist. So yeah, but they had everything, the box and somebody did not use it much. Yeah, I kept it as a memory. I tried to keep one memory prop of each film. This was it. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a good part. And it, and it actually um, actually works too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, okay. It just wasn't as a prop that you made it look like it worked. Okay, great. We have one last question that's coming for you, Katarina, is um, they want to, well, I'll answer this. Yes, Katarina did play the mother and they wanted to know uh, why did you decide to cast yourself in a film? It was something that I did not uh, invent and plan in the first place, but I'm also a professionally trained actress. And I always had this idea, okay, I'm gonna do it at some point. And so during the casting, as we were looking at different um, characters or actresses for the girl and also for the mother, and I found uh, Nina first and um, we did a really nice casting together because I was always playing myself in the casting and I thought we had like a very interesting combination or energy which was yeah kind of magical and I um, as we were looking at different people and for me it was also very important to have this kind of that the people have these connections the actors and I also wanted to rehearse and this way I then decided, okay, I think I actually have this special connection to Ninal and I think it would be interesting to try it. And it was not something that I planned. I had to first explain it to Samuel and to Julia and the producer, but then we did actually a rehearsal before I made the final decision and it went really well. And I thought, okay, it feels right. And it's something very interesting because then it's only us and that I don't have to direct another 
actress and tell her in the breaks, but I can basically steer the scene myself with the rhythm uh, from inside as the mother. And it, it was a very lucky constellation. It, it, it did work out really well. Uh, thank you for giving us that insight. And, and finally, Katarina, uh, what's next for you? Uh, Julia mentioned that you're working on something else. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a project about a young girl coming from Germany as an exchange student to the US and exploring uh, the rural America in New Mexico. She lands in a very small town and uh, makes her experiences, first experiences of being on her own in a society. And it's set during 9-11, um, so it's a very special and tense uh, moment in time also. And the project is going to be called I'll Be Gone in June, and we hope to shoot next year in New Mexico. That would be really that nice. Sounds, that sounds really interesting. Really interesting. Good luck with that. And um, if you're looking for any actors, you have one right here, um, Niall. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. she would be, if she's available, she would love to be in your film. <laughs> See, Niall, Niall, I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> Well, this has been such a great conversation. I thank you all for your time. We are pleased to be joined today by the director, um, Katharina, and the writer, Samuel, and the cinematographer, Julia, and the actor, Niall, from the film Day X. So thank you all very much for your time today. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you to our audience for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about the current 45th Cleveland International Film Festival and any future film festivals, please continue to follow Cleveland Films on social media or visit clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you.